Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so this was meant to be posted like a week ago, but your girl's been super busy. Um, this is a Bettina super glitter, super take up a bunch of your time tumbler, but um, I really like how it turned out. I was really excited about it. I'm gonna have more pictures of it on my Instagram that you guys can check out. So make sure you guys go follow me there. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It is gonna be a little bit long, but that's just because this process literally took forever. And um, there's a lot of content that wasn't even filmed just because it was so much. So I'm gonna do the best I can to explain how I did this and let's go ahead and get started. So I started off with a prepped and sanded 30 ounce tumbler from Griffin Blanks. There will be a list of products down below and even some discount codes. Um, I'm using probably about three milliliters of CCDIY Facet. And then the glitter I'm using is OBX by Peachy Olive Glitter. It was one of the glitters in one of their peachy palettes recently. And when I opened it, to me, it had the perfect combination of Matisse and Little Mermaid and I knew I had to do something to combine all three of these glitters. So I completely base coated my cup with this glitter making sure that there was full coverage on the entire cup by spreading it around. Um, I haven't put these in shakers yet as you can see it's still in the bag but um, just make sure it's fully covered and then um, look at that sparkle. I literally was this is probably one of my favorite glitters from Peachy. I was obsessed with how well those two colors went together and how I was able to use the other two colors. Amazing. Anywho, so we went ahead and added a, another coat of epoxy. Once the bottom coat was dry, you could have also done a flood coat, but I did it right before I went to bed. So I didn't do the next coat until the next day. Um, so for the second coat, I think I did probably about 30 to 40 milliliters of CCDIY's Fast Set Epoxy, spread it around evenly. I did a thick coat because I wanted it to be thick. Next, I went ahead and started with the Wrap of Roses. I will link the SVG um, down below. When you go into Design Space or Silhouette Studio, you're gonna wanna make sure that you measure your tumbler around and the height after you've applied your epoxy and before you apply the decal so that it is as accurate as possible. Um, so that's what I did. I went ahead and cut it down as best as I could so that I could wrap my tumbler with it. And um, this was a, uh, not continuous, I forgot the name of it. I forgot, It's it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> um, Basically it continues. So it, there's supposed to be no seams. Um, when I started this, I really had no idea what I was gonna do. I just knew I wanted to use Matisse and Little Mermaid and I wanted to do roses. And this was all guesswork from here on out. So you guys have seen me wrap tumblers before with templates. There's a ton of YouTube videos and creators who do it much better than me. Uh, Myra makes it. Dixie Darlins is the queen of pattern vinyl wraps in my opinion so she's been fantastic um i definitely recommend doing a quick scrape over with a squeegee prior to pulling it apart because for some reason mine was sticking more into the paper versus the transfer tape um i did learn to just roll the tumbler um this has made it a little bit easier than just placing it down uh, i feel like it goes a little bit smoother around so once i did that i um went ahead and peeled the backing off and started going all the way around the tumbler. Um, like I said, go over it again with a squeegee because mine was not sticking for some reason. Um, I had a softer mat. It's used for like computer desks, this mat here. I can link it, I got it off Amazon. Um, I felt like it was more even than the table because I have like epoxy and glitter on it. This made it like a smoother process to just roll the tumbler onto the vinyl. Um, went ahead and pulled off that backing. Now, what I did when I did this tumbler was make it very hard on myself. Um, so basically the way that this template is set up, um, it's either you have an outline of roses like here, or you or or you take out the inside of the roses okay 
I did both. I had some that I did the outline and I had some where I took out the inside. Now, when you're, if you do decide to do it that way, I recommend taking a fresh blade, exacto knife and cutting around the seam so it doesn't rip up all of the outline around the entire tumbler. So if you're doing both, now if you just wanna do the outline, you don't have to do this step. This is me literally looking and searching and everything else. <laughs> um, see here, I try to go with the motion of, or I guess the curve of the rows that I was pulling up so that it's separated from the other line. So this is me going through for this one rows and pulling it up. Now, when I tell you I didn't even film all of this and the film was still about three and a half to four hours in length in total before editing it down and speeding it up, I am not kidding you. And this is from not only pulling up this vinyl, but also doing the glitter portion, which you'll see me do next. So um, if you wanna make it really complicated on yourself and you like doing that to yourself, then I highly suggest doing it the way I just did it. Um, if not, I recommend just doing the outline or just doing the inside part. And if you're just doing the inside part, it might even be easier to pull off, see how I'm doing it here, pull off those pieces before transferring it to the tumbler. Um, that way you don't have to do it on the tumbler. You could put it over a light board and really see the little pieces. Um, <laughs> um, this was difficult. Um, like I, and honestly, originally when I started doing this, I was going to do this to the entire tumbler. Um, I was crazy. I ended up not doing that because my hand started hurt. My neck started to hurt. I was over it. So you're going to go around, you're going to pick up random pieces. I tried my best to do like every other. So like one be just the outline, one be just the inside, one be just the outline, did the best I could, but then in reality, I thought also, I'm gonna be using two different color glitters for this, and I didn't assign one to like the outline and one to the inside. I literally did like, I'm gonna put Matisse in this one, and I'm gonna put Little Mermaid in this one, and kind of just tried to put it, do it, I tried to do the best I could. Um, so this is going to be me um, consistently pulling this up, I'm going to speed it up a little more. I know it's already super fast um, so that we can go ahead and move on to the glitter portion. I do recommend your tumbler being fully cured before applying this vinyl on top of it though or else it's going to like pull up your epoxy or be really hard to pull up or leave a sticky residue. I also recommend using like Oracle 631 which is a removable type of vinyl. Um, this helps you not have sticky residue left behind. Um, which is great when you're doing peekaboos and stuff. Because even though I'm going to be covering these portions with glitter, there are going to be other portions where there was vinyl and I'm pulling it up and you don't want sticky residue there. It's annoying. So definitely recommend um, like Oracle 631. I have a huge roll of like the matte white and the matte black because those are what I use most often for um, peekaboos or temporary vinyl. You could also even do um, like a tan or brown I try if I didn't have like the white or the black and like a huge roll like literally like a 20 foot roll of vinyl um, I probably would do like one of my lesser used colors which is brown tan um, like green like random colors I don't usually use um, but anywho um, I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit and let you guys watch me uh Oh wait, no, okay, yeah, we're on the glitter part. Um, I edited this video before doing the voiceover like a week ago, so um, I am using Mod Podge and I'm mixing it with a metallic acrylic paint, um, Deco Art. You can get it off Amazon. You don't have to mix it. I think you should mix it. Um, I tried doing it without mixing it, didn't look good. Didn't film it because this video was already gonna be, well, I did film it, but didn't it didn't make the cut for this video because this video is already long enough. So, you're gonna do one flower at a time. Do one section of a flower at a time. I'm starting off with Matisse, and so I'm using this copper metallic acrylic paint mixed with the Mod Podge. And I'm trying not to do like too much Mod Podge everywhere so I can see what I need to pull up. Um, but uh, once you do some Mod Podge, you go ahead and pour some glitter on, and then 
Mod Podge glitter, Mod Podge glitter, you know. Um, if you feel like it needs another layer, go ahead. Um, some portions of the flower of the rose did need, see how I'm going back, did need some more glitter. So I went ahead and did another layer. Um, some portions did not, so I didn't do another layer. Once you do that, go ahead and pull up those uh, pieces of vinyl. I'm using a um, pin pen. I'm going to have these available again on my website. These were invented, created. They are patented by um, 143 Vinyl, who used to be 651 Vinyl, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's what they were. 631 vinyl I don't remember but they are now 143 vinyl and they sell the pen pen they are amazing um I have them on my website or they will be restocked on my website um one of the best weeding tools I have I've used a lot of these weeding pens from different places um and just I don't know the way this one is fits comfortably in my hand so I really like it um, so once I was done with that one, I picked another flower that I wanted to do Matisse. And so I added the, the Mod Podge mixture and painted over it. And then I added glitter. And then you're basically going to just keep doing this back and forth until you cover up those portions. Um, so what you see here is I was like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and start glittering before I pull up any more vinyl. And then that ended up being like, no more. I did not end up pulling up any more vinyl because I was like, okay, this is too much. This is, this is, I'm doing too much here. Um, I do like the end result, so I don't regret anything that I did. I definitely think I could have made it easier on myself, but we're not here to do that, right? We just like to make things harder on ourselves. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so, um, brushing off all the excess. I have a specific soft bristle brush that I literally only use to brush off excess glitter like this. I have, I literally do not use it to paint, to Mod Podge, to do nothing because I treat my paintbrushes like crap. I never use them correctly. I never wash them. So I always have like one or two that are specifically never to be used for anything but brushing glitter um, because a soft tip helps, especially if the Mod Podge is not fully dry. So um, yeah, uh, the teal, which is Little Mermaid by peachy olive um definitely needed some second coats in some spaces if it was a not the outline but you know the um the actual like full inside um overall it was it wasn't that bad um plus these are both fine glitter so I didn't show the rest of it because it's literally the same thing over and over and it took forever I went ahead and added a coat of epoxy probably anywhere from 20 to 30 milliliters of cc diy's fast set um, and then I did this sanding, which you see here. So I sanded it all smooth to the smoothest I could do because, um, you know, those flowers were on top of already epoxied glitter. So I didn't want this to be too thick of a cup. Um, once I sanded it and took some 91% alcohol and cleaned the cup, I went ahead and added another coat of epoxy. And then what you see here is there was a bunch of blank spaces in that, um, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and I thought the patina colors, the, the like copper and turquoise, like went perfectly with these glitter colors. So I went ahead and base coated it with a like copper metallic spray paint in just little bursts, and then also did white on top of it once the copper dried. So you see here, I'm covering it up some of the other portions. So I got this patina paint off of Amazon. Recently, I have gotten some patina paint from um, Southern Bell, and I'm probably saying it wrong, Southern Dixie Bell Glitter. I don't know. Um, I got some patina paint from her. I have not been able to use it yet. I'm super excited. I really want to use it. Haven't had a chance. So I'm going to try that with another cup, see how it goes. Um, this is like a cheat patina because there's no like spraying or chemicals involved. This can be found off of Amazon. Um, I will link it below. Um, I watched a tutorial from Flynn Sisters. Um, Jessica Flynn has a tutorial about a patina cup. I watched her tutorial and then another one I cannot remember off the top of my head because it was literally two months ago. Um, then once I... 
So you do the teal first and then you do the copper after the teal dries. I recommend waiting for the teal to dry before you do the copper um, and vice versa. So as you can see here, the teal is dry, kind of. Um, and then I'm taking some goof off and 91% alcohol to um, distress what is already on there. Um, I And plus clean up all the extra spray paint that went over the glitter roses that I spent so much time on and I don't want to cover up all the way, you know? So here is the, um, the like copper and you're using like a chip brush, a rough brush. These are brushes that I use for like wood grain, um, to brush off like the heavy excess glitter on cups, things like that. And, and having a piece of paper there helps because you just kind of like tap it and make sure you don't have too much because it has pretty good coverage on it. And I just wanted like a little bit. So I'm literally, and I know this is sped up and I'm really sorry. Um, it's, you're literally just lightly painting it on um, is all it is. It's, and I'm going back and forth between the teal and the copper. Um, I, like I said before, I recommend the teal being dry before adding the copper because then it just turns into a little mush pile. Um, <laughs> Uh, it just mixes too much together. But I'm just going back and forth. I'm just giving it a distressed look, a little something extra that probably wasn't needed, but I really like how it turned out. Um, so after I did this and after everything 100% dried, um, I went ahead and added uh, 20 milliliters of CCDIY Fast Set Epoxy. Um, and then I went ahead and sanded. I wanted to sand everything smooth um, because the paint is kind of, um, chunky. I don't want to say chunky. Um, abrasive. I don't want to say that either. It's like, I don't know. It's, you can feel it. So, um, I sanded it down the best I could. So it was smooth. I used 91% alcohol, completely wiped down the cup of anything extra. And then I cut out some flowers. Again, I'll link this below too. Um, in a metallic, um, turquoise. I'm pretty sure I got this metallic from Create by Firefly. I have a discount code with her down below as well. And then I originally had this like really cool um, brassy color that was going to go really well with it. But for some reason, my Cricut would not cut it correctly on this um, SVG that I created, which again, I'll have linked down below. And um, so because of that, I use this, I'm pretty sure it's Cricut brand, which I'm not a fan of Cricut brand vinyl, but this turned out well. It went with the cup. I just, I went with it. You know, we do what we can. And I just kind of placed it around, um, placed it around. I did the roses and the turquoise. The roses would not cut in the other color for some reason, just was not cooperating. So I just kept it turquoise. I liked the turquoise color. Um, I think it turned out well. Um, once I did this, because these lines are so thin and metallic can have a tendency of popping up, I went ahead and took some quick coat from CCDIY and did a layer on my um, on my tumbler before I epoxied it. Now you wanna make sure that the quick coat is completely dry prior to putting epoxy on. Um, so I did a layer of, I actually did two layers, it dried, I did one layer, it dried, did a second layer of the quick coat, it dried, and then I went ahead and did um, a final coat of about 25 milliliters of epoxy um, from CCDIY. So this is the final result. I did some really big close-ups because I really like the details and the layers in this cup. Layers have been my new favorite thing. Um, so that's what I've been doing a lot of lately, but I really like how it turned out. I mean, while it did take a lot of work, it was a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Check out the uh, more pictures on my Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.